Clinical Pearl Number 1 Scheduling appendicectomy within 24 hours does not increase the risk of appendicial perforation compared with scheduling surgery within 8 hours. There is no international consensus exists on the surgical urgency for acute uncomplicated appendicitis. For acute uncomplicated appendicitis, scheduling appendicectomy within 24 hours does not increase the risk of appendicial perforation compared with scheduling surgery within 8 hours. The results can be used to allocate operating room resources, for example, postponing nighttime appendicectomy to daytime which allows greater efficiency and effective use of physician and hospital resources. Clinical Pearl Number 2 Ingesting magnets, especially rare earth metal magnets, can lead to high morbidity and mortality. The plain films show nine intra-abdominal small magnetic balls aligned in a row, associated with partial small bowel obstruction and developing ileus. Note that, when more than one magnet or a magnet and another metallic object are ingested, they can become stuck together through walls in the gastrointestinal tract, creating a risk for obstruction, erosion, fistula formation, and perforation. Newer magnets containing boron, iron, and neodymium are 5 to 10 times stronger than plain iron magnets. Symptoms of magnet ingestion may manifest days after ingestion. Higher risk features of magnet ingestion include Ingestion of a magnet and a sharp metallic object Higher number of magnets ingested A longer interval over which the magnets were ingested Multiple magnets in the esophagus, which raises concern for concomitant aspiration. Clinical Pearl Number 3 The time needed for a clinician to perform a point-of-care ultrasound, POCUS, is about 6 minutes. POCUS has been shown to change medical management and decrease time to diagnosis. A recent study reviewed 2,144 studies and found a median time of 6 minutes to perform a bedside ultrasound. The study measured only the duration of time from starting the exam through the ultrasound work list to the timestamp on the last recorded image. Clinical Pearl Number 4 there is no evidence of an effect of hypertonic saline compared with mannitol on long-term neurological outcome. A systematic review and meta-analysis in 2023 showed that there is no evidence of an effect of hypertonic saline compared with other agents, mainly mannitol, on long-term neurological outcome. There is no evidence of a beneficial effect of hypertonic saline on all-cause mortality, uncontrolled ICP, length of hospital or ICU stay, and ICP reduction. Hypertonic saline may be associated with an increased risk of hypernatremia. There is no class 1 evidence showing superiority of one agent over another in the management of cerebral edema and intracranial hypertension from different causes. Clinical Pearl Number 5 Patients with mandible fractures are unable to perform the tongue blade test and are indicated for imaging study such as CT scan. If you can successfully break the tongue depressor in a tongue blade test, it would be reasonable to forego imaging. The tongue blade test is conducted by asking the patient to bite down on a tongue depressor on one side. The clinician then twists the tongue depressor and attempts to break it. If the clinician is unable to break the tongue depressor the test is positive. If the clinician is able to break the tongue depressor the test is negative. Clinical Pearl Number 6 Patients with HIV infection are at a higher risk for acute coronary syndrome even in the absence of other risk factors. 
HIV is thought to accelerate atherosclerosis via multiple mechanisms including chronic inflammation, hypercoagulability, and endothelial dysfunction secondary to the virus. HIV-infected adults presenting with acute coronary syndrome have shown an increased burden of thrombus in the infarct-related artery compared with uninfected controls. HIV-infected persons presenting with a first episode of acute coronary syndrome are, on average, a decade younger than uninfected persons. Even patients on highly active antiretroviral therapy with undetectable viral loads are at a higher risk for acute coronary syndrome than non-infected patients. Clinical Pearl Number 7 A universal load-and-go strategy may not meet the needs of all patients in traumatic arrest. Priorities of pre-hospital trauma resuscitation include hemorrhage control, airway management, and blood product resuscitation. Recent studies challenge the simplistic paradigm of load and go for all trauma patients and urge EMS teams to consider specific injury patterns and factors associated with survival, which include 1. Traumatic arrest witnessed by EMS 2. Initial rhythm not asystole 3. Arrest due to tamponade or hemothorax. 4. Circulatory arrest due to controlled hemorrhage. 5. Successfully managed airway. Therefore, goal directed pre hospital treatment should focus on potentially treatable causes of circulatory arrest, such as pelvic fracture, tamponade, hemothorax, and obstructed airway. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.